I think it's time for a new episode of Superhero Deep Dive. What do you guys think? I I agree. Let's let's do it. Um, welcome to a new episode. My name is Jason, and I am your host. I have a fun episode. I'm going to be talking about the Max. Um, if any of you guys are fans of the '90s, like I am, uh, the Max became popular with an MTV cartoon uh, that came out. It was about thirteen. 13 episodes and it was awesome and um, it's a really unique a really unique hero and a really unique story so let's get into that before I do I uh, just have to give my normal disclaimers like I always do uh, the information pulled today is from different sources across the internet and may or may not be completely complete but they do give a really good insight on the current superhero and I always get asked this because for some reason, people don't listen to the explanations at the beginning of the show. Um, but I always get asked, why do I have to say this? And it's because there are always people out there that are experts in certain characters. Um, it may have just triggered something within them in, in their childhood or something where they just love that character. And I fully respect that. Um, and I don't want people to get offended if I omit something. The only reason I don't include something in is because I don't feel that it really contributes to the character um, for the purposes of the podcast or, you know, um, I just don't see the impact that it has. Or maybe, maybe it evolved into something else. Like maybe there was another part later on that didn't really gain popularity and it just kind of totally redid the character. I, I would probably admit that I'd probably go with the version that most people recognize and that way they can go and see the next evolution of that character for themselves. But um but yeah. Um as always you can you can catch me on Twitter at Super Deep Dive and make sure you use the hashtag superhero deep dive. I have been trying to be more active on it and I am so sorry because I have gotten some messages um, where I was posting like fun facts. And people enjoy them and then I stopped and it's not because I couldn't find any it's not because I just didn't want to do it it's literally because life got in the way and I just don't I just don't spend all my time on my phone um, to where I can I can devote like it's just I just hadn't gotten in the habit of it yet so I will work on it um, but you can catch me wherever you listen to your favorite podcast you can also catch me on YouTube under Superhero Deep Dive. Um, and you can catch me on Outworld Fleet Radio every Tuesday and Thursday at various times throughout the day. Um, it's a great channel. And it, the station for that is, um, like I said, Outworld Fleet Radio. You can Google that. Or you can go to www.un-conventional.com dot com forward slash radio so yeah there's that um i'm multitasking but but yeah let me get into the max though um the max is a really cool series because it's um because actually from what i have seen in the comics the mtv animated series in the late 90s or mid to late 90s was pretty on par with it like it was pretty accurate um, which is always good because uh, you want those good translations um, but it was this big purple and yellow guy called the Max so the it's titled after the superhero but it takes place in a world created by the girl that he is protecting um, and then, but that world was also formed by the main bad guy. So there's so many layers. Like, the hero isn't actually the main character in the show. It's just named after him. The main character is the girl that the hero protects and her journey. So there's, there's a whole lot of layers to it, and it's, it's really cool. So, um, yeah, the series follows the adventures of a hero in two worlds. The real world and an alternate reality referred to as the Outback. Um, 
and and it's metaphorically look and it looks just like the Australian outback from what we understand. Um, there's not a steakhouse in it though, so I call shenanigans. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad joke. <laughs> but in the world world, uh, Max is a homeless man living in a box. While in the outback, he is a powerful protector of the Jungle Queen who exists in the real world as Julie Winters, a freelance social worker who often um, ends up bailing the Max out of jail. Uh, while, Ma while Max is aware of the world of the Outback, Julie is not, though it mixes in with both their stories. Um, the, the main bad guy is called Mr. Gone. Um, and the reason I'm getting into the main bad guy is because it's the hero is is one part but the you have to get the whole story or you have to get a bigger picture at least um, but mr gone is a is the main bad guy he is a serial rapist and he somehow has like a telepathic link to julie um and and he has an extensive knowledge and access to other people's quote-unquote outbacks like their mental landscapes um at first, he starts phoning Julie, but she thinks he's merely an obscene phone caller and ignores him. Um, but really, he's just kind of setting the stage, you know, like he's a serial rapist. So he he plans out his things and he, he does he does this. This is who he is. Um, but eventually, the Max gets in Mr. Gon's way by protecting Julie. Um, Mr. Gon tries to kill him with assistance from the Outback's main predators, the Is. And the is are like these little white creatures. They don't have eyes. They're just like, um, they look, I don't know. They, they just have these little bodies with round heads and teeth. <laughs> you know, um, the Max fights him in both the Outback and the real world. Now, eventually, Mr. Gon um, makes Julie see the truth about her past and reveals to her how the Max came to be. Uh, Mr. Gon first met Julie when she was a child as... And, and he was referred to as Uncle Artie, um, a friend of her father. Um, he talks about a visit to Australia and how that kind of helped shape Julie's version of the Outback. Um, so it was from like kind of like a memory she has. Um, and as Julie begins healing herself and heals the Outback, um, the series starts to follow a girl named Sarah who is a depressed teenager his mother sends her to Julie for counseling. Um, Sarah's often in conflict with her mother who disciplines her so she will not grow up to be like her father, Mr. Gone. So see how it's all kind of intertwined. Um, okay, the backstories of several characters are revealed kind of midway through the series. So like while in college, Julie picks up a hitchhiker who beats and rapes her before leaving her to die um, to help cope with this. She hides in what is referred to as her outback, um, where she, and, you know, and it's in her subconscious, it's in her mind, so she ultimately has control of this. Um, in the outback, she becomes the jungle queen, with, and she's kind of like this, like, all-powerful goddess lady, um, but she spends so much time dwelling in her outback that the real world um, and the outback gradually become unstable, you know, like... Things just aren't holding up because she's spending too much time in a fantasy world. Um, one night she accidentally hits a homeless man with her car. Remembering what happened the last time she stepped to help someone. You know, they beat her and raped her. Um, she covers the unconscious body with trash, but in doing so, she unintentionally opens a link to the outback. Um, as Jul After Julie leaves, a lampshade in the trash, which had brushed the outback expands over the man's body becoming a mask and costume and links him to julie uh the homeless man's actually named dave um he actually merges with her spirit animal in the outback and her spirit animal's a bunny so <laughs> he turns into this weird human bunny purple costumed man mix so that's that's kind of like the backstory with it um it's really cool. I mean, if you look like, you know, like she knew Mr. Gone. She had a connection when she was younger. If he's a serial rapist, he may have done something when she was a kid that 
that just wasn't delved into in the sources that I found. Um, but I mean, it, it just lays, it just has so many layers. And um, the girl Sarah, who is often in conflict with the mom, you know, the mom says um, she doesn't want her to grow up to be like her father. Um, what if, what if Mr. Gone raped Sarah's mom? And, and these are things that are speculation. I just, I just haven't found that information. So if you know, let me know, because this is interesting. It's deep. It's involved. Um, you know, and, and those are the kind of stories that are really cool. Um, so yeah, like, I mean, you know, she could know that Mr. Gone raped her and she had the child and she's worried about the child being, um, you know, something triggering in the child to where she can end up being like Mr. Gone and end up taking advantage of people. You know, like, it's it's just crazy. It's crazy. And what, what do you do at that point? You know, like, there's so much, there's so much that can go on with this. Um, I love it. But his powers... The Max has super strength. Um, he has a connection to the Outback, and he's got these spikes um, on his hands, kind of like, kind of like Wolverine, how how it looks, but it's a one giant knuckle claw on each hand, um, right in the middle. So, you know, it's it's hard to describe, but you know, the best way I could think of is like kind of like how Wolverine has the claws that come out of his hands, like out of his knuckles. He has something like that, but it's just one giant knuckle claw. Um, relationship status. He has got a connection to Julie, who he protects. Um, he and he also helps protect the girl Sarah um, at times too, because he she's got that connection. Um, he always feels the needs the need to protect her, um, and that really seems to be his main focus. Um, so you know he's not. It's not really a relationship status, but it, it kind of is at the same time. It's not like, I can't even think, I don't want to say it's a romantic one. It may be at some points, but it's definitely more of um, like, you know, when someone, imp like when an animal imprints, you know, um, and they protect that, their, their caretaker. So, yeah, that's kind of like the backstory for the Max. What do you guys think? Uh, let me know. Like I said, you can catch me on Twitter at Super Deep Dive. You can use the hashtag Superhero Deep Dive. Um, you can send me an email at B, the number four, it all at yahoo.com. Uh, you know, let me know what you guys think. I, I would absolutely love, I would love to have some more information on this because the Max was a cool character. He was a cool character and. I know there's got to be more. I know he did a, um, they did a crossover series with the Max and Batman. I didn't cover any of the details from that, um, because that, that was kind of a, a side story, but let's, let's hit up my favorite part of the show. This is where we kind of explore what can we do with this character? Um, or in this instance, what can we do with these characters, the story? You know, um, where can we go? Do you, do you want to see it as a comic book series again? Do you want to see it as a um, animated series, like Revive? Do you want to see a um, a live action series? Do you want to see a movie? Think about that. Before we do, before we go into that, um, I did have one other section as a fun fact section. I can't believe I missed it. So let's cover that. Fun facts. Um, of course, there was a series, um, an MTV animated miniseries in the 1990s. Um, you may be able to find it on YouTube. I haven't looked. Uh, let me see here. Can I get to my computer past my microphone? Um, just bear with me for a minute. I'm going to look to see if it's on. Because if it is, I know what I'll be doing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will be looking it up and watching it. I'm sure you can find it on um, certain certain sites uh, to download. I, I am not advocating it. I'm just saying I'm, I'm sure 
I'm sure it's available because the Max series had a cult following. And I think that's awesome. Uh, let me see here. I'm on YouTube right now and I'm typing in the Max. It's M A X X. So let's see. Um, it's searching. Oh, uh, you know, there's, um, I, there is, there are some, there's some things called the max full episodes. Um, so it, it might be worth a try. I might have to look at that tomorrow. Um, but yeah. But there, there is, there is um, resources out there. <laughs> but um, yeah, he had the miniseries that lasted about thirteen episodes. Um, that's where the Max really became popular. Um, in two thousand eight, a guy named Chris Vick made an Atari Jaguar, which was um, a video game console based in nineteen ninety three. Um, he made a video game demo based on the Max for the there was a contest called the Jag Code 2. Um, and since he is a winner of the contest, it is still available on the Jag Code 2 website. That came straight from Wikipedia. I have not looked up Jag Code 2, so I can't give you any more information on it. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, this is kind of cool. An audio drama comic adaptation called Maximum Sound. And it's M-A-X-X-I-M-U-M sound a comic book soundtrack was made from the first three issues of the comic book and released on audio cassette in 1993 that's pretty awesome um and on november 22nd 19 or 2019 so just a couple years ago about actually at this point about a year and a half ago channing tatum and roy lee announced their intent to produce a film based on the max but Channing Tatum also intended to do a film based on Gambit, and I haven't seen that yet either. So take it, take it with a grain of salt. It's still a fun fact. <laughs> um, but yeah, but let's get into the power expansions. Um, I had I had a cool idea. Um, like I said before, power expansions are where we look for um, how can we expand on the character, whether it's in um, a comic book series. Uh, storyline whether it's in a movie if it's a mini series or just an ongoing series for TV or Netflix or Hulu or whatever streaming service Amazon Prime I, I don't know um, Tubi I, I, who knows who knows anymore there's there's 50 of them out there and what if it's on one it'll be on another soon after so um and if you didn't want to cast it, who would you cast as what character? You know, um, so I was looking at it and it, it, the story brought to mind um, a movie from the late 90s. Um, there was an awesome psychological horror movie called The Cell. Uh, if, you, if you remember it, awesome. If not, it's definitely worth, it's definitely worth a watch. Um, it had Jennifer Lopez and she was like the social worker. And she would, um, she was working with a, a little boy, and the boy, like the way that she was working with them was, um, they kind of put them in these suits, and they hooked them up to a computer, and she explored his mind, and she got to talk to him because he was kind of comatose, so she got to she got to talk to him and interact with him and stuff and try to help help him out from that um and in that movie there was a serial killer and they find the serial killer um but when they find him he had he had already abducted like his next victim and then something happened to him and he kind of went into a coma so they went to her so she could explore his mind to try to help save like find out where the um the other victim is and help save them or you know stop 
what's going on and you know it was it was real interesting it was real interesting because she had to explore this twisted mind um where you know once he figured out that it was in his mind that he was in control of the narrative then you know things just started happening and i mean it, it was really crazy um it's a very good movie but that story kind of reminded me of this like what if um you know what if there's like a mini series where the max kind of fights off different attacks by mr gone or any other dramas that julie or even sarah encounters um it can flash back and forth between the real world and the outback have kind of a horror theme to it um and it'd be pretty awesome you know like you know just play on the psychological aspect like the outback is there and you know these are these are landscapes formed by by the people but um you know it's in relation to you know mr gone's telepathy i believe or there's there's definitely a connection with it so he has influence in that too so you know um the max can go and since he since he brushed with it and has contact and an awareness of the outback he can do that but he can also navigate the real world and try to keep an eye on julie or julie is helping him um as well and it can create a whole dialogue but you know um I said it could be a mini series, but maybe even an ongoing series because he can he can help other people that maybe his existence is a direct result of Mr. Gone's influence. So like any and since Mr. Gone is a serial rapist, maybe anyone that he impacts um you know, like the Max can enter into their minds or their quote unquote outbacks as well and the battle just doesn't end you know like there's um like there's always a fight to be had with it there's always a gotta we gotta get rid of mr gone and he you know you can add um you know like kind of like that mystery element of going in and trying to solve these cases and be on the lookout, but also, you know, the psychological aspect of um, how Mr. Gone, with his mind view, can shape the outback of other people and, and impact them like that. So I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, and if I were to cast it, I, I was looking up some actresses that kind of went with it. Um, I, I really don't think race is a big deal. Julie in the comic was like this... Um, blonde haired you know white woman i don't think it matters too much but if i were to keep it close to the actual comic drawing i would i would cast julie as um an actress named sarah gray uh, she's been in a show called the order as one of her main roles um she has this kind of look it's vulnerable it's cute but um there's kind of like a a sternness that she can do too which you know i think i think would really would really work for her and she's a she's a younger actress i think she's in her mid-20s but you know she um she hasn't really gotten a bigger break yet and i think this could be something that could be a bigger break um i think I've, i'm pretty sure i've watched the order though and and the order was pretty good but i mean you know this could be one of those things that and you know being a jungle queen uh, a lot of the images are of like you know the character in like a loin cloth kind of thing doesn't have to be all that um you know doesn't necessarily have to be all that you know that was done in the 90s purely because um sexual exploitation was the thing um and and you know if you say it's not you won't convince me otherwise i'm sorry um if you look at the culture in the 90s everything was extreme everything was sexual you know it's just how it went um but that's who i think what do you think let me know um, like I said, you can catch me on Twitter. 
at Super Deep Dive and use the hashtag Superhero Deep Dive. Uh, leave a comment on on the YouTube video. You can email me directly at b the number four it all at yahoo.com. Um, but yeah, I would love to delve into this because I think that this story has so many layers to it, but none of none of it has been delved into, and I don't know why because it looks like it could be. It could be delved into so much. But that's all I've got for this week. Let me know um, what you think. And you can reach out to me for anything like comments, critiques, questions, ideas, requests for other heroes um, to cover. I am all for it. In the meantime, you guys, be happy, be blessed, be safe, be smart. And if you're not smart, don't get caught. I will catch you next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.